Hi, today's lesson is going to be about the atomic model. Most of this is a review of chemistry, so hopefully you're all aware of a number of things and uh, this PowerPoint will be mostly a refresher. We're going to talk about the atom itself, okay, the fact that it has protons, neutrons, and electrons, and then we're going to dis differentiate between a couple of things called conductors versus insulators. Okay, so just a review. Hopefully, again, uh, none of this is going to be new to you, but atoms are made up of three primary objects, particles. Protons, neutrons, and electrons. The protons and neutrons are located in the center of the atom, or the nucleus. Okay, and protons are positively charged. Neutrons are neutral and don't have any charge. The electrons, though, are kind of like orbit or, you know, form a cloud around that nucleus. And the electrons are negatively charged. And all of matter is made up of these atoms um, with their protons and electrons. And there's lots and lots of them, okay? You remember, one mole of a substance is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 uh, units, okay? And that's a lot of zeros, 23 zeros, okay? So, a <laughs> couple of definitions uh, the various elements that we have, all the elements, hydrogen, helium, etc., etc., okay, the, th what differentiates one element from another element is the number of protons in the atom. A hydrogen atom has one proton, helium two, lithium three, and etc., okay? So if I change the number of protons, I've changed the element. If I change the number of neutrons, that generates a new isotope of that element. So hydrogen with one neutron is different from hydrogen with two neutrons or three neutrons. Okay, and normally the atom has an equal number of electrons and protons. Okay, this makes the atom neutrally charged because if I have five protons and five electrons, they effectively cancel them out, plus five, minus five. Okay, but if I have an unequal number of electrons and protons, that makes it an ion. I could have more electrons. If I have one more electron than protons, it becomes negatively charged, minus one, or two extra electrons, minus two. Similarly, I can take electrons away and have more protons than electrons. Okay, in that case, I could have a charge of plus one or plus two. Okay, and I talk about charge, and the units of charge are a unit called coulombs, represented by capital C. Okay, and the charge of an electron and the charge of a proton are ident are similar, except the electron happens to be negative and the proton happens to be positive. Okay, positive 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, or minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. For this class, that's the smallest unit of charge that we're going to be working with. Okay, so we say that charge is quantized, which means that it comes only in integer multiples of that 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. So I could have 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19, or 3 times that, or 4.8 times 10 to the minus 19, but I can't have any numbers in between. I can't have 1.7, I can't have 0.5. Okay, that's what it means to be quantized. It basically comes in integer multiples of that unit. Okay, it is true, some of you may have studied or learned a little bit more, uh, and you can subdivide a proton or a neutron into th objects called quarks. And the quarks, the smallest unit of charge there is one third or plus positive one third of E, E being that 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 or um, minus one-third E, okay? Just be careful with that letter E, okay? That E is not the natural log E, okay? That's the charge of an electron or charge of a proton. It's the elementary charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Okay, so when we look at objects that are charged, okay, it's not that that object only has protons if it's positively charged or only has electrons if it's negatively charged. It clearly has matter. It's made of elements. Okay, so when an object is positively or negatively charged, it simply means that there's an imbalance in the protons versus electrons. Okay, it could be a large imbalance given the large amounts of um, atoms that make up the object. Okay, so if I remove electrons from the object, 
okay, the, the object ends up with a positive charge because if I removed electrons, it now has more protons, more positive than it does negative. Vice versa, if I add electrons to the object, I can give the object a negative charge because now the minuses outweigh the positives. Okay, and this is important, okay? It is the electrons that I can add or remove. It's very, very hard to add or remove protons, okay? Um, because the protons are pretty much locked in place in the nucleus, okay? It's really difficult to make them move. Okay, so a little bit of discussion about conductors versus insulators. These are the two primary um, types of material that we have. Okay, a conductor is basically any material where the electrons can freely move about. Okay, primarily we're going to be working with objects that are metal, metallic, or wires. Okay, it's true that water com that comes out of the tap is also a conductor. It has lots and lots of free ions associated with it, uh, things like chlorine. Okay, um, and those free ions is what allows electricity or those electrons to move fairly easily. An insulator, however, is a material where the electrons are not free to move. They protect you against electric forces and electricity. Okay, so an insulator, examples of that are rubber and glass and air. Okay, these are objects that pretty much don't allow electrons to move from one place to another. There is a third class of material. Okay, and that third class of material is called semiconductors. Semiconductors are really important because they were uh, basically what enabled the information revolution that we have now. Okay, and semiconductors are a special type of material that can act as either a conductor or an insulator depending on the situation. And so by controlling that situation, I can make the material act like a switch by letting the electrons pass as a conductor or blocking the electrons from passing as an insulator. And by putting a large number of these uh, semiconductors on a single material, basically a computer chip, I can do calculations and uh, make decisions and basically everything associated with the information revolution. Thank you.